Intel's already working on their Druid GPUs. RTX 5000 cards have a big problem, Nvidia gets rid of this and specs finally leak for AMD's RX 8000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mel. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. First up for today, while Intel only just announced their Battlemage GPUs, they're already working on not only next-gen Celestial, but also next-next-gen Druid. As you can see right down here, Tom Peterson from Intel, who was with Nvidia, I swear the poaching that goes on with these companies. Either way, he was in the Full Nerd podcast recently, and during that, he states, quote, Our IP, that's kind of called XE3, which is the one after XE2, that's pretty much baked. So the software teams have a lot of work to do on XE3. The hardware teams are off onto the next thing, XE4. Now, for those who haven't kept up with rumors, and if that's you, why aren't you subscribed to GamerMelt? Go ahead and do that. I'll wait. Okay, so rumors have pointed to Intel doing away with their discrete GPUs for Druid. I believe it was that Celestial may have a little something, but not much, something like that. Maybe it was Battlefield. Either way, definitely nothing by Druid. And since then, Intel has made tons of cuts to their discrete GPU teams, including the head, Raja Kaduri. So it was getting pretty dicey there. But this is giving people new hope. With that said, I do want to urge caution, because don't forget that this architecture is also in the integrated GPUs for Intel's mobile division. So I'm going to be honest, while a lot of people point to this being proof that Intel isn't getting rid of discrete GPUs, I'm not 100% sure. I definitely hope they don't, I mean, even just competition in the mid-range is for sure needed, but I'm definitely not sure that they're talking discrete GPUs. Now it does certainly seem like that is the case, but just sort of a warning. And next up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series, other than the RTX 5090, could have a major issue. But first, if you saw not too long ago, I found the perfect office chair, the C7 from FlexiSpot. Well, they've done it again with the C7 Max. This bad boy is amazing in every way. For starters, the seat is extra wide. You might notice that I'm a pretty big guy, and yet I've got ample room to actually spread out and get comfortable. It's also extremely sturdy, so I can recline all the way back and know it'll hold my weight. And unlike most chairs, the recline feature is actually stiff, so you can leave it on without it going all the way back every time you sit down. It has this really nice leather-feeling fabric across the armrest with beautiful chrome accents. Oh, and these bad boys move any way you could want. It also has an automatic lumbar support, an adjustable headrest, really thick cushion. I mean, what doesn't it have? To top it all off, FlexiSpot has a 30-day return policy and 10-year warranty. Plus, they have other awesome household items like their new portable vacuum. To check out all their great stuff, visit FlexiSpot and use my code for a great deal down in the description below. Now, back to the story. In my last video, I went over the wild PC requirements for the new Indiana Jones game. Since then, the game has come out, and it's even worse than I thought, especially for those with less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Yeah, you heard that right. 10 gigabytes isn't even enough for this game. Don't get me wrong. The game itself is beautiful, and there's definitely nothing wrong with pushing the limits of hardware. I mean, the first Crisis is still joked about today, even though the game itself wasn't exactly known for being all that fun. Either way, let's get to the benchmarks. As you can see, Computer Base tested the game across multiple GPUs. And when we look right here at 1080p, yes, at the highest settings, but 1080p, this game cripples any GPU with less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So much so that the RTX 3080 actually loses to the A770 and it gets destroyed by the 6700 XT and 7700 XT. But get this, it gets even worse because this doesn't include path tracing. That's not even out yet. That's why they pretty much require an RTX 4090 with DLSS 
and frame generation to get maxed out everything. With all of that said, these numbers don't include DLSS, and from what I've seen, you only have to move a few settings down a little to get better frame rates, but it still has to suck if you paid 700 bucks for 3080 and you can barely play this maxed out at 1080p without turning on upscaling. Speaking of, it doesn't have FSR support, but clearly AMD was smart enough to include more VRAM in their GPUs, though the 7600 is in trouble. And this brings me to NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 5000 series. So far, most of the leaks claim that every card other than the RTX 5090 is set to come with the same amount of VRAM as current gen. And the same problem could happen with the 8000 series, but I'll get to that in a minute. Ultimately, I guess fingers crossed NVIDIA changes their mind on specs at the last minute. Next up, it looks like NVIDIA has ended support for GeForce Experience. The app originally launched out of beta over 10 years ago, and it's really wild to see it go. After hundreds of updates and tons of changes, I guess all I can say is... Good riddance, that stupid app was the bane of my existence. Having to sign into an app like that just to get driver updates, and it seemed like it would never keep you logged in, I mean, it sucked. And of course, it's been replaced by the new NVIDIA app, which is pretty nice. It's trying to combine both the GeForce Experience and Control Panel apps, though you still have to go into Control Panel for now. Though from what we've seen, NVIDIA will likely get rid of that before long as well. Either way, as you can see right down here, GeForce Experience is notably missing in NVIDIA's latest driver update, and the NVIDIA app takes its place when you look at the driver components. And lastly for today, specs for AMD's RX 8000 GPUs have finally leaked. While NVIDIA's 50 series specs have been leaked left and right, AMD has been able to keep a pretty good lid on their 8000 cards. That is, until Kepler on Twitter decided to change all of that. And of course, he has a really good track record for leaks in the past. Either way, as you can see right down here, he first discusses the RX 8600 SKU. I would assume we're talking the 8600 XT, but either way, you can see that he claims, which this is actually referring to this one from video cards, which is why we know he's referring to the 8600. Not only that, he also mentions for three generations in a row, well, here it is. The 8600, like I said, likely XT card comes with 32 CUs, the exact same amount as last gen, and eight gigabytes of VRAM. Basically, it's looking like AMD is also doing what NVIDIA is doing with their RTX 5000 cards, though I will say for the most part, AMD is kind of ahead of NVIDIA in that game just because a lot of their cards come with 16 gigabytes. Just a lot of them come with more than NVIDIA's, except for the 600 series because those obviously only come with eight. But that isn't the only thing he talks about because according to him, the RX 8800 XT comes at 64 CUs. Now, here it is slightly more than the 7800 XT, which obviously is at 60, and then it comes at 16 gigabytes of VRAM, as well as 64 megabytes of infinity cache, but basically this really isn't looking all that great either. I mean, the VRAM's fine, but 64 CUs honestly isn't all that impressive. Not only that, but he also states that he doesn't actually think that it's as fast as, well, in this case, 4080 Super, but from what we were seeing, it was more right around the RTX 4080, so that still really may be where it was at, but with 64 CUs, I'm really not all that excited. With that said, don't forget that the biggest jump in performance is definitely going to be ray tracing and that is the stuff that we've really seen being a massive generational jump that probably doesn't even require more cu so at least there we will almost certainly see a massive jump in performance but 64 cu's really isn't all that impressive if you ask me with that said this will likely ultimately boil down to price so while that does it for today, are you disappointed in these next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to get your discount on FlexiSpot C7 Max in the description below. And as always, have a great day!